like. And we found out, without knowing what Ava found out, we found out that he liked the same thing that Ava found out. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like him to come up, and in this box, uh, there, uh, Park, if you'll get the other half of this, so it, uh, this is not a, a, a sterling or a stainless steel revolver with a pearl ham, uh, handle, if, if all of you heard that story this afternoon. But I think if Park, if you'll pull out uh, the other part of this, you, you'll see what goes along with this. And, and Ava, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let you make some remarks now, if you'd like. And I'd like to, are you, you want to go down? Thanks. Oh. I think. <laughs> Uh, the ceremonial session, I don't know if those of you that were uh, attended it know that it went very, very well. Uh, there was lots of praise, accolades, people were telling me how they appreciated my efforts on the court and how I single-handedly moved Florida out of the dark ages. <laughs> and I expected, quite frankly, tonight's program to be of the same high caliber <laughs> with the added attraction of a fine dinner. <laughs> I like that little bird. <laughs> And I'm sure that's what Russell Troutman had in mind for this afternoon. I can only conclude, therefore, that tonight's program was hijacked. And no, Russell, your check will not be in the mail. <laughs> he bought a friend of mine, Gunner Hunter, our uh, Miller. And uh, Gunner and I have been friends for 30 years. He got Gunner to turn state's evidence against me, <laughs> testifying before the Supreme Court at the ceremonial session, and uh, I just didn't know that Gunner would sell out <laughs> that way. But under the influences of uh, Russell, apparently you got to him, Russell. And as to the rest of these scurrilous, and uh, unfounded rumors, I'm not even going to try to respond. Uh, though the urge is great, and my memory is long, I'm a bigger man than that. Uh, so that, but I never thought I would have the awesome power of the Willie machine <laughs> lined up against me. <laughs> and now I know how justice must feel when they know that they're coming up against the Willie Gary Empire, <laughs> the juggernaut. And I now know where the weapons of mass destruction are. <laughs> Things have completed completely gotten out of hand uh, under Willie's control. And I uh, Willie, I think your wife will hit you tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try to bring some sense of decorum and dignity uh, back to this occasion by sharing with you uh, the first few months of my retirement. The first two months were spent trying to retire. The paperwork and details are staggering. And when all of these financial advisors somehow got wind of the fact that I was in the drop program and I had some deferred comp coming in, like vultures, uh, they appeared out of nowhere. And with all these schemes and charts, and how to parlay my money into the millions. One wanted to sell me an insurance plan that matured in 30 years. 
I'm 72 years old. So that didn't exactly make my socks roll up and down. Another appeared with charts and graphs, and they were just absolutely mind-boggling. One little fellow who was apparently just breaking into the game didn't even have a slick portfolio, but he told me he was a good Christian, and he was sent by God. <laughs> so I just about decided to bury it all in the backyard of the coffee can when the federal government informed me that that would have serious tax consequences. So uh, I had put it in a 401. <laughs> And if you've noticed the market lately, uh, not much has happened in there. So to clear my mind, I decided I would indulge my passion for fishing. But here again, I soon discovered that you can't fish every day. And with the cost of the bait and tackle, and kind of cruddy tackle that I had, it was costing me about $15 per fish. So I had to give that up. <clears throat> so at the insistence of my kids, I decided to write my autobiography and came up with the title, An Autobiography of Leander Shaw. <laughs> After several false starts and sleepless nights, I finally concluded that I didn't know enough about the subject matter to continue. <laughs> so I'm now writing a more useful book. Uh, like most great artists and writers, and, uh, the title uh, came to me out of the blue and I wrote it down on a napkin. Now, I meant to bring that napkin with me tonight to uh, give to Russell, and I, I will give it to you, Russell, if you get back with me, and uh, so you can remember this occasion. So I decided to write uh, the title, A Short Explanation to Practically Any and Everything Worth Knowing in the World. <laughs> so in about six weeks, I expect to be out with the book. <laughs> and if you want to really help me out, you can buy the book. I know it's been a long day and the night's wearing on, and I seriously have enjoyed the entire day, and I'd like to thank everyone who's participated. These are all my friends. I love them, and that's why I can joke with them, and they can joke with me. I'd like to thank the Supreme Court Historical Society for tonight, and especially thank Ben and Russell and the members of the committee uh, that organized the uh, past. Day. I'd like to thank Dean Looney for his efforts on behalf of guiding Florida A&M University Law School through its formative years. We all need to get behind the dean and do whatever we can to see that law school is a success, and I know it will be. I'd like to thank the Supreme Court members that I've served with and let them know that I've learned so much from them and that I value their friendship highly. I'd like to thank my aides, my JA, and court personnel who made my job so much easier and made it such a pleasure. I'd like to thank Governor Graham uh, for the faith that he had in me and the lawyers throughout Florida who have befriended me during my professional career. I know that I've, I've possibly left out uh, somebody very important and I apologize for that, and if, if that person would stand there, I'll recognize him. <laughs> uh, but it's really been a pleasure. So God bless you all, and thank you. Let me just point out that I think that we have seen today the, the, what, a, what a really great man, a great professional truly is. So one thing I do want to explain to you is that 
Justice Shaw is from Jacksonville, and ordinarily we would have the oral history program in Jacksonville. He chose Orlando because he wanted to do something for Florida A&M Law School. And that's exactly the type of person that he is. He thinks of others before he thinks of himself. Before we end the evening, I want to join him and join others in expressing my thanks to uh, Russell Troutman for all the work that he did to put together today's program. I want to thank all of the... Thanks to the Orange County Bar Association and Brian Wilson, Brian, for all the work that you and your association have done to bring together this, uh, this evening and this afternoon. And thanks to Park Trammell, who is our executive director. Uh, Park, would you stand the executive director of the, of the uh, Historical Society? And there are many others at work. Uh, we believe our society has a very important role, and we would invite all of you to join uh, you'll have an opportunity when your dues statements are received for the Florida Bar dues because there's a checkoff for something that you can do for the Historical Society. But this is an example of what we try to do is try to preserve the memory of our courts, our Supreme Court, and those justices that have the privilege of serving uh, on the court. We would invite all of you to participate. We hope that you'll attend any other event that we're able to schedule. I do want to remind the sponsors uh, and there are many of you here, your names are on the back, and I want to thank those sponsors, but each of you is entitled to a book, which is on the table back uh, to my left, your right, and I hope that you'll pick up your book concerning the history of the Supreme Court of Florida. Thank you very much for a wonderful evening. Thank you for coming.